singing and then there's some singing. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the difference between singing and singing is the, is the anointing. testimony from last week at all. You, you don't have to say it. Just God did something. You just slip your hand and say, say Lord, I receive it. Amen. Amen. I said, Lord, amen. I, I told you it was coming. Amen. Amen. Get ready. Some more is coming. Everybody with your Bibles, repeat after me in good voice. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word today. As we proclaim this word today, you dwell in every heart. You attack on us in Jesus' name. And you take the, 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 the power out of a guy, head, or out of, a, out of a, a head that is coming to, uh, a war head that's coming to destroy us. And we dismantle it now in Jesus' name and declare now that your word will take eminence in every place. God, we wanted to live big. We wanted to become a rhema to become our personal word that we live in and we walk in in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now all in agreement say, Amen. Amen. We walk by faith, spirit, setting your faith loose. Turn to somebody and point to them, not being rude just point to them and say, loose your faith. Turn to somebody else and tell them, loose your faith. Now put the emphasis on your. Turn to somebody and tell them, loose your faith. Loose your faith. Amen. 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 Whose faith needs to be loose? Amen. Amen. Lesson four. Setting your faith loose is a daily exercise. Better than that, it's a lifestyle. To walk by faith means that there is a prescribed way to walk, or there is a definite plan on how you should walk. And let me think, for those of you that think you need to keep working up something, your faith walk does not need your physical work. The work has been done by Jesus on the cross. Amen? The work has been done. But there is a work that you need to do that's not your physical work. You need to work the word in faith. That's where your work is, in the word. This was a revolutionary word for me. 
You need to work in the Word. And I was here listening to, I believe, Robert Morrison, and he said, we are physically healthy on the outside, hefty too, because we eat. But then he said on the inside, we are emaciated because we don't eat. If the, if, 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 if the Lord Christ said, give us this day our daily bread, he gives us daily bread because he wants you to eat daily. And if you aren't eating daily, you're imbalanced, you're growing larger on the outside, and you're okay on the outside, but on the inside, you are emaciated, and you're wasting away because you don't eat. Sometime during the day, you need to open up your word and eat. Not just on Sunday. Amen. You need to eat. You need to do something besides being on social media. You need to eat. You need to eat something. Something that's going to make you healthy inside out. And there's something about the inside that it'll reflect on the outside that you're eating all right. All right? Okay. back to the right place. And it was sad if you touch it, it'll slip all the way back to the top somewhere. How do we set our faith loose? Number one. I'm only going to give you three of these. Three points. Number one, through knowledge of his will. Through what? Through knowledge of his will. Let me say this statement again. You are empowered to loose your faith. There is no excuse. Based on that glass I passed around last week, the measure that you're in, you're empowered to lose faith. You need too much stuff to not let your faith go after it. Somebody should have said amen. amen. Isaiah 28 and 29 says this about loosing your faith and then knowledge of his will. This also comes from the Lord of hosts who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. First of all, he's wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. So when you know the will of God, you get the wonderfulness of his counsel and the excellence of his guidance. And you need all of that. I thought that was just fabulous right there. And then... Paul gives us information on knowledge from Ephesians 1, 17 through 20. And amazingly, every time I see this verse, I think of two people, Joe Brooks from Kalamazoo, and then I think of Rose because she, 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 she references this a lot. She says it a lot in so many different things. But this is, this is one of the passages that I, uh, just certain people come to mind when you hear that. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that, comma, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Boy, I just saw something there. That your understanding is really eyes. Your understanding helps you see. So you need to understand. And people that don't want to understand stuff, you're saying, leave me blind. That's why they, they're not attentive to the word because they don't want to see. 
Because once it's in the word, it helps you see clearer. And you have no excuse for what is the will of God. I know it because I see it. Woo. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Whenever light comes, it dispels what's been dark. And then it goes on to say, once the light comes on, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That's the will of God. You know what the hope is called. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead? This is dunamis power. I'm going to talk about that a little later. That he raised him up with a mighty power. That same power is here today. And seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. The most basic thing you must know is that God wants to meet your needs and wants. You think God is just around to meet your needs. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the basic need. But that's not all he's able to do. How many want a little meat to go with the bread? I heard, I think it was Bill Winston. He, he, he mentioned this, this woman had gone somewhere in Chicago and she had gone to a, a barbecue place. And she had got her good old, uh, uh, got her some good old ribs, plenty of sauce on it. And then she walked away from the counter and she, she noticed she didn't have some. So she took her bag open and she marched back up to the counter and peeped through the window. And she said, uh, you know, she said, do bread come with this? <laughs> Sometimes you want something else beside what you basically got. Amen. Do bread come with this? It's like going to the shrimp hut back in the days and, and you, uh, oh, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> they better send them crackers with it. Too. And that little old cup of coleslaw that only go for two bites. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Y'all woke up when I said that, didn't you? Now, I know some of you don't remember dot netters and you don't remember Carl's and yes. ah, ah, ah. <laughs> But Psalms 23, 1 and 2, David knew something. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. So because I have him in leadership, I shall not want. He either makes sure that my nerves aren't always tore up. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. You must find out what the word says about your wants and your needs. That's your job. That's why you listen to the word. Because you want to find out what the Lord's will is about your life, yes. your situation, yes. your stuff. Amen? Amen? The word is God's testament. Testament means a law, belief, or will. What is it? It is what God requires of you but greater still, it's what he has made available to you. His testament is what he requires of you, but better still, it is what he has made available to you. I like the second half a lot. Although the first half, you got to get that together so you can get the second half. He requires something of you. You got to source out what it is you need in the word of God. And use that word to make sure 
you, you tap into the source. Amen? Time to tap into the source. Amen. Time to tap into the source. Time to tap into the source. I remember when we were between two houses. We needed to sell our house in Oak Park so we could buy our next home in, 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 in Southfield. And we went after uh, the, the new house, but, but we wanted to sell the old house uh, uh, first because... God had blessed during the time, and this would uh, say this with me, long time ago. Long time ago. All right, all right. Our, our credit wasn't good, so the person in Oak Park, a Jewish uh, lawyer, gave us a land contract that he wrote out on a sheet of paper. And he wrote every payment down and the dates for maybe a few years in advance. Well, we did so good till we paid it down. And during that time, you know, if you abuse something, you have to go through a season where you can't use. Amen. Amen. We couldn't use a car. We couldn't use credit because we had abused it. In the time when the credit was really real good, we were buying dumb stuff. <laughs> and everybody, every time somebody sent an offer for a car, we said yes and took it. Come on. Come on. I mean, I'm talking about me now. It was dumb. See, when you don't have knowledge, you, you do dumb stuff. Amen. And sometimes when you got knowledge, you still do dumb stuff. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you listening? <laughs> I think it's dumb when you don't listen. Because when something hit, you say, didn't nobody tell me? Well, no, you weren't listening. Amen. Amen. And so with that, we spent those years paying everything cash. But in the meantime, it was God's way of restoring us back. Because sometimes the cutback is for a fuller growth. Yes. Yes. So, so, so we were in this house in Marlowe. We, we bought this house. And, and when we went into it, everything wasn't perfect in the house. And on top of that, in the basement was a big old tank that used an oil furnace. An oil furnace. I hadn't lived in a house since I was born with an oil furnace. Every house had a forced air furnace. That means the gas come in, a pilot light jump on, and you got heat. With this oil uh, 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 furnace, a truck had to come out and load you up. And don't Run short of cash or you'll be lighting the stove. No, I'm telling you what's real. So you'll understand what God can do. Because not only does he want to, 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 to supply your wants, but he'll give you your desire. While he's fixing you up. Oh God, oh God. And so, so we had been in that house for, for a season and they paid it down. We paid every note to them. We didn't pay it to a mortgage company. We didn't pay it to a credit company. We paid it to him. And he kept marking it off. On the sheet of paper, just marking it off, marking it off. And we did that faithfully. There's something about doing something faithfully. You'll make some headway if you do it faithfully. <laughs> uh, are you listening? And so, so, so we decided to sell the house and, and, and what we started believing for, Pastor and I, and, and I think uh, uh, Lou was real smart, and he? I think he's just a baby. I don't think Bridget was born. Was she, she wasn't born then. She was two years old when we left. And the point is, is that not only did a Jewish lawyer sell us the house, then we had a Jewish real estate lady. And she came in because she was so determined. She said, oh, we're going to get things together and we're going to sell this house. And I just looked at her. But I kept thinking, nobody in the, well, a few other folk had an oil furnace. But I said, nobody, I, I just said. But then something clicked and said, you have to change your confession. You've been listening to Fred Price and different people. And so I said, 
we will sell this house. We came into agreement. We're going to sell this house. 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 And one day, Ruth Levy, she's in, in the presence of the Lord now, and, and her son is Pastor Marcy's dentist right now. He, she called us and said, I, I have a potential buyer. I said, what? <laughs> you know when something jump inside of you, that means your faith. Yes, yes. You realize something getting ready to happen. And when she talked, she said, she said, I think you're going to be a little bit excited. I said, yeah. She said, he likes the house. I said, with the oil furnace? She said, yeah. She said, and guess what? He's from Washington, D.C. I said, I guess that's important. <laughs> well, she said, he's a cash buyer. I said, with the oil furnace? <laughs> She said, yes. And here's how God worked it. I said, then the house that we wanted in, 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 in Southfield, we will set the clothes on it before the one in Oak Park. And God just fixed it. So the house in Oak Park, we had made so much equity in it till we had enough to put down past 20% on the new house in Southfield. Because we cut back. He just, you can't buy nothing. Pay cash for everything. So you learn discipline. So how the Lord fixed it is we closed on the Marlowe house on Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember back then. I'm, I'm a little older now. <laughs> Early in the week. And then had the closing for the new house on Friday of the same week. And later on, I checked back to see, was the guy still happy with the house? I couldn't believe it. I just went by there. He had put new windows in, and he didn't have the oil furnace. He put it. <laughs> but I didn't care because we had a check, and we had walked into the new house. I don't know whether that blessed anybody. Number two, set your faith loose in prayer. I want everybody to set their faith loose and pray. I was teasing with the usher and media team in the back that they had come together, prayed, and they prayed so fast. I thought they prayed a dinner prayer. <laughs> God is great, God is good, and we thank you for our food. That's what you pray when you really want to eat fast. That's the way Lou prays right now, my grandson, while he's holding a piece of bacon. You know how he is. <laughs> prayer is key to moving in the will of God when we pray we enter into his presence but when we praise and worship and give thanks he enter into ours okay. that's why it's necessary that's why when we're doing praise and worship you enter in so he can get in amen when you pray the will of God, which is his word, he hears and responds. Mark eleven twenty four 24 tells us, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. When do you believe you receive them? At the moment you're praying. At the moment you're praying. You don't look for it to show up 
You look for it to show up afterward because you believed it when you prayed it. When? The moment you prayed it. That you receive. And you will have them. What is it? Them things. Let me say it this way. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them things. And you shall have them things. So you don't have them because you don't believe. And I told you how key belief is and how dangerous unbelief is. Because if you unbelieve, if you are a, a, a non-believer, it's almost saying you are unrighteous. Oh, oh. And people that are still trying to work it out in their own flesh, that's why they can't be attentive to the things of God, is because they're trying to work it, but they don't understand the work has been done. Oh, God, oh, God. I, you 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 working up a sweat, and it, but the work has been done. All you need to do is work in the Word. How heavy does it need to be? It's a matter of turning pages. Hear your work. Thus says the Lord. You shall lend to many and not borrow. How heavy is that? You didn't even break out of sweat to read that. Come on, come on. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to your, his riches in glory. You had, how much sweat was that? You, all you had to do is, is just. You have not because you ask not. Let me add, add here's Lucille Trammell. You have not because you read not. <laughs> you sleep, but you don't read. You're distracted, but you don't read. You're religious, but you don't read. You're churchy, you church, but you don't read. But the preacher better have something to say. He ain't said nothing today. Well, I got news for y'all. You ain't read nothing today. Because if you were reading, we'd have the fruit. He's not taking you from crisis to crisis. He's taking you from faith to faith and glory to glory. If you're going from crisis to crisis, you're going in the wrong direction. Because you need to read yourself into a new GPS system. Anybody there? This ask is in the will of God and in faith, both of which honor him. But there are hindrances which can block prayers, faith. Prayers and faith. Sin and unforgiveness. Everybody say those with me. Sin, Sin. and unforgiveness. Mark 11, 25, 26. The next verse is down. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Unforgiveness is dangerous. It's insidious. And we cover it in like. I just don't fool with them. Whoop, there it is. Somebody <laughs> said, oh, Lord. I don't know something about them. All that ridiculous stuff. The devil keeps you from really doing what's right. If you have anything, everybody say anything, anything. against anyone, forgive him, her, them. That your father in heaven may also forgive you. So what you won't do for them, he won't do for you. So we think we have a right to be unforgiving. When God says, you're not me, I'm me, and I forgive you, what make you think you don't have a right to forgive everybody else? Ooh, you're not me. Ooh. Are, are y'all out there? 
Does that make a little bit of sense? Yes. All right. Also forgive you your trespasses. That means your generational sin. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. All that long standing stuff. That you keep just saying it's in the past. I really love America because when you bring up racial issues, they said that was that was then and that was those people. And you still, generations to the third and fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh day, y'all still operate in it. And you want to tell us it's in the past. It's in the past. Who past you talking about? <laughs> Come on, we might as well just call it out like it is. Because you don't want to address it now. But that means it didn't happen. Because you didn't put it in the history book didn't mean it didn't happen. Because you don't want Harriet Tubman on the money. That mean didn't happen. Okay. If you don't forgive, he can't bless you. Write that down. If I don't forgive, he can't bless me. So maybe if there's a cog in the wheel of some of your stuff that you're trying to get going, you need to check the forgiveness meter or for, just go through your history. Who is it that I'm not forgiving for any reason? And the reason why we don't forgive is because we want to see people see uh, judgment. I want them to get what's due them. Whoop there. You know, you <laughs> kick there. They're natural. You <laughs> That's what will satisfy you. I don't want them to get free. I want they, you know what to get tore up. Number three. Set your faith loose in corresponding action. Corresponding action. That means once you know you need to lose your faith, there's an activity that you go into that helps you lose it. And it's based on the word. And this is another place that says in James, faith without works is dead. That means as you work your faith, your body gets in motion over stuff. So you're not trying to make it happen physically, but, 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 but you're walking along with an active faith, working it. Oh, God. It means sometimes you get up and go to a place. You get up and do something that the Holy Spirit prompts you to in faith. Give this to somebody in faith. You don't know what you're doing it for, but, but in faith you do it, not understanding all the B's and the Y's and the I need to understand because you do it because in faith, because God said do it. Ooh, how many of you ever did something and you said, God, this don't make sense to do? How many of you know it don't have to make sense to you? God don't need to explain to you why you need to do it. So it can fit your gray matter. So it can fit your paradigm. It don't make sense for you to bless somebody that's already rich. Maybe God is trying to get you to hook into a stream that's greater than that pond you in. Come on here. Yeah. So you, you, you give based on need. They look like they need something. So you hand them down. What if he say, give up? They don't look like they need nothing. Ooh. We're so backwards in it and we don't even understand. They don't look like they need nothing. Bill Gates gave, what, what's the other guy that he buddy with that's real rich too? Warren Buffett. Why would Bill Gates give Warren Buffett millions of dollars, yea, billions for his foundation? He could have looked at him and said, 
Man, you already got money. You're a billionaire like me. But I think us down here can learn a lesson from them up there. Amen. And all that money he gave us, he recouped it. If he dropped a hundred dollar bill, it cost him too much to re reach over and pick it up. Set your face loose in corresponding action. There's so much in this Bible that will be revealed to you if you're open in faith and love. Remember, faith works by. Faith works by. Faith worketh by. Thank you. God will teach you and train you from it. Mark 2, 1 through 11. This is long, but in it is a good story. Give us, a, and it gives us a good example of corresponding action. And it starts by saying, and again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Everybody say he was in the house. Yeah. Who was in the house? Jesus. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. So they were packed in until they were standing at the door. And he preached what? The word, the word to them. Then they, which is an outside group that were not in the room, then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they were so full of faith that they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their what? He didn't see their damage. He saw their faith. Whose faith? Who is there? The four men. See, you need friends that know how to operate in faith. You hanging out with homie because they talk like you want to talk, but they don't have any corresponding. You need to be around somebody that know how to release some faith when you in a paralyzed situation. Oh, God. you just hanging around with them because you've been knowing them a long time, but they unproductive. And they broke. Oh, God, oh, God. They unproductive and broke. And they ain't even bold enough in the Lord that if you get sick enough, they'll get on top of Dove, tear this roof down, and say, 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 Jesus is in the house. And those rascals were systematic. They didn't try to bring him in, break the roof at the door. They said, where is he teaching that? They obviously had to listen for his voice. Oh, he at the front of the house. He not at the door. He at the front of the house. So they, they went to the front of the house, and then they drug him up onto the roof and tied ropes on his bed, the four corners, which was a cot. Tore that thatch roof up, and where they let him down was the most appropriate place. You need to know people that know where Jesus is positioned. Oh, God. He ain't at the door. He's at the altar. Oh, come on. Oh, no, no. You ain't ready for this today. You keep missing it because you want to hang at the back of the church. And they let him down at the feet of Jesus. Let me keep reading because y'all, y'all. 
was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. Now, now, there's two things that happen here. He said, when he saw their faith, he said, your sins. When he saw their So there's something about sin and faith. The same power it takes to handle your faith is the same power it takes to handle your sin. Do you see it? When he saw their faith, he said, now I can go to work on that. He said, he said, we're going to get you up, but we, 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 let, let's, let's take care of the important part. You think it's the paralysis that's got you. But he said, your sin. Son, your sins are forgiven you. He didn't tell him rise until he addressed his sin. Maybe you'll get him to go somewhere if you address your sin. Because that's faith too. That's a word of faith. Do, do y'all see it? And see, and you turn your ears off and you turn your senses off when the word of God is going forth because you're distracted by everything else and you, you, you can't. You know, sometimes I hate mobile devices because we act like we can't live without. I wish that I could turn them all off when you come into this house. And I'm, I'm just getting real straight with it because, because what I'm saying is what you need to get you to the next place. And you think you're operating in the next place now, but you're missing it because Jesus is in the room. Yes. 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 He's the word. Yes. And so, so, so he said, son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there. The religious folk were sitting there and reasoning in their heart. They were reasoning in their heart. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God? You missed the point. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Why don't you understand this? Which is easier to say to the paralytic? What's the easiest thing to say? Your sins are forgiven you? Or rise, take up your bed and walk? He said, it's all a faith exercise. He said, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise. In, in, in the face of them that were pondering this blasphemy in their heart. Arise, take up your bed and walk. Now who do you think the paralytic guy listened to? This was double coupon day for him. He got a twofer. What was the twofer? I think the sin had something to do with the paralysis. So when he spoke a word of faith over it, the word did something. It handled all the situation. See, in your situation ain't going to get handled until you lose some faith on faith. And so it even handles the nasties. It handles the rough stuff. Don't allow yourself to not forgive anybody. You don't have a right. Because you passed somebody in the mirror that was forgiven. While you were combing your hair, you were looking at somebody. Yes. 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 While you had the crimpers up. While you were shaving the top of your bald head, you saw somebody. And who you saw was forgiven. When you got out the shower, you dried off somebody that was forgiven. Are you out there? I say to you, rise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Leave this house that got tore up and go to your house. 
the man who was sick and the men who carried him had faith. Because the man's friends had faith, but when he said their faith, he was talking about everybody, including the paralyzed guy. Because you was crazy enough to let them drag you onto the roof. No, 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 y'all don't see that here. Where are we going? We're taking you to the roof. Where are you going? We're taking you to get some help. So you have to be complicit with them for them to do what they had to do. So everybody had to operate in faith. I don't know how y'all going to do it. Oh, y'all tearing up somebody's roof, but I got to get healed. Uh, I got to get delivered. <laughs> Go on, do what you do, but bro, brother, we with you. We hanging with you. Come on, come on. You need to hang with some people that are going to be bold enough to do something that's on the edge. That gets you delivered. Send me somebody that when I'm sick, they're going to pray me through. Not that, not that somebody already mourn. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lord. No, you ain't praying. Get away from me. You in grief. You already at the funeral. You're already at the funeral. You're already in grief. Oh, Lord, 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 get out of here. And whenever Jesus got to a scene and they were grieving that way, and, and, and he opened the door and shut it and threw them out. Because you're in your flesh. And there's time when it's a matter of an if. I need faith for this. Send somebody that's got a little faith. And the one thing I read this week is that, that when the Lord comes back, he's going to look for one thing. He wants to know if there's faith in the earth. Ooh. He wants to know if there's faith. Did I see somebody loosen their faith in the earth? He's looking for the church that has loose faith past your fear. Pass all the stuff that's going wrong. And he'll keep you so focused on all the wrong stuff till you can't see that God says, loose your faith and vanquish your fear. Are y'all out there? Amen. Follow me. What's a hollering? The power to heal in Greek is dunamis. I know some people say, it's dynamite. No, God ain't blowing up stuff like that. Dunamis is inherent power residing in a person that exerts, pushes out ability, might, miracles, strength, power, and here's the one that ought to make you stand and applaud, wealth. You need dunamis power to blow your wealth in. Ooh. Dunamis. It's this power that got Jesus up out of the grave. Holy Ghost, dunamis power. Wow. It's this power that's released when you speak a word. It's so powerful that it knocks away all the no's along the way to deliver a yes to you. If you're going through something, don't worry about it. Do that previous stuff, step one, one and two, and, and will. And forgiveness. And go on, let dunamis, faith, knock stuff out the way. Are y'all there? Amen. The same dunamis power that heals also forgives. That's what happened with the paralytic. He got a double coupon and he got a double dose of dunamis. The dunamis power is at work in the believer to bring to pass your word confession, your words, your words. Ephesians 3.20, and I'm almost done. I am done. I'm done. I'm done. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, yes. Yes. abundantly, yes. above all that we or Think. according to the what? Power. That works where? In us. That works where? In us. According to the what? Power. 
and it's above all that we can ask or think. God is not at your, the level of your ask or your think. He is above it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I can ask you, but you're still above it, so you're able to exceed it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Every word Jesus said brought faith. Those words still work today. Jesus defeated fear and death with faith-filled words. Your part is to choose to stop the fear and believe God. You will be made whole. Put your hand on yourself. You're waiting on somebody to throw all on you and lay hands on you. Tell yourself, I will be made whole. You know, I realized that the power was inherent in me, so I started laying hands on myself. Self, you will be, be made whole. This anointed hand is off of an anointed person, so uh, self, you will be made Come on, come on, come on. If you can't get to a preacher or a nun or a priest, say to yourself, self, I will be made whole. Wherever it's hurting at. I, come on. I, I, if you trouble in your mind. Uh, ain't no no by shaka. I will be. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on in here. You don't know what I'm talking about. Your stuff is raggedy and sideways. And you got the message inside of you. You got the power inherent inside of you. So you need to put your hand on yourself and stop being silly. This is the word of faith which we preach. Yes. For we walk by faith. <laughs> Come on, put your hand on yourself again. Yes. I dare you to put it in places where, where, where you need that healing at. Yes. You get it today. Yes. Take your pulse. <laughs> Tell your blood pressure, I will be made whole. Yes. Clean out all of my blood vessels. Get rid of all the plaque. Yes. Regulate even my dietary habits. I'm going to do a corresponding action. And I'm going to cooperate with the anointing. And I'm going to watch you make a difference. If your sinuses are bad, put your hand on your, where, where they are. I will be made on your knees. You know them knees is acting up. If it's your hip, don't be embarrassed. Just yes. reach out and grab it. Yes. Yes. Put, put your hand on it. I know it looked crazy, but you need to get delivered. It looked crazy to the parent look man until he jumped up. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Y'all didn't want me to get this, but I got it. You call it blasphemy, but I got it today. Give them a good praise in this house. Wholeness is not your problem. Believing is. Blessings to you today. Father, we thank you. And we bless your name. And we give you glory today. <laughs> Come on, lift hands and give him a good praise in this house. Stop resettling into somewhere else. Just 